We didn't intend to be farmers. We bought the property to live in while Manling was in graduate school. I started out very traditionally, ceramics, sculpture, stone carving, installation, and public art. As stewards of the land, we feel a little responsibility to do something with it in a positive way. And the artwork started to morph into the growing process. I work with Mei Ling. She's the brains of the operation, but I provide a lot of the technical side of things and a few cogent observations here and again. And the heavy lifting. <laughs> the heavy digging, I should say. I found that I could make these sculptures, which are biodegradable. They're inoculated with mushroom spawn so that these sculptures will become eventual soil amendments. About 90% of all the food we eat comes from green plants, which form a symbiotic relationship with fungi. Mushrooms don't have any chlorophyll, so they can't produce any carbohydrates. In order to get the carbohydrates, they have to get them from vascular plants. And in many cases, they'll actually penetrate the plant's roots, take the carbohydrates in exchange for trace nutrients. It's a very natural way that things really should grow. People often say that when you garden, it's like the world's slowest performance. It's a way to, to really keep learning and to really keep looking at every different aspect of the world where things go forward and they seem to complement each other. Most of my work is three-dimensional and I decided to take the three-dimensional route because I really felt that people were hungry for experiences that allowed them to explore walk around and move their bodies in space. I live in the woods and usually I'm looking for whatever that year is giving to us. So if we have an extraordinary flower year or extraordinary mushroom year, I'll be using those kinds of things in my pieces. I also like to recycle whenever I can and find things that nobody wants anymore and integrate them into pieces. So I get inspiration from both abundance and availability. Maps are fading out and I got a phenomenal number of maps. So <laughs> I rode my bike around the city quite a bit and tried to take in as much of this atmosphere as possible and looking at all the maps that people brought to me once they saw my pieces. I just uh, started making uh, the North Carolina Charlotte dresses. The dress was kind of a natural for me because people enjoy looking at things that are beautiful or ask you to consider something in terms of your own body, which is, you know, to me, what the forms of dresses do. I just think that every artist has deeply personal things that come out in their artwork no matter what. It's something you can't really control. <laughs> but when people see it, they're going to hopefully bring their own selves to it and think about what it means for them. I started out in drawing and painting, and then I shifted to printmaking. I've been combining the two mediums and using relief along with screen print. I think I use my art really to create a dignity and a passion for people of color. I don't see that so much in the media, so in a way I want to create that vision or connection through my work. 
Even though I use images that come from mass media, I'm kind of repurposing them in a very traditional way. So I'm getting the drawing as precise as I can, and then once I'm carving it out, that's when the magic starts happening because that's when I'm trying to use different tools, different textures to create something that's going to be unique. I'm working on a couple of pieces on identity and I'm focusing on uh, how people see each other or why people are having to migrate. And, and in some ways it's all related to, to war. Right from the very beginning when I started doing uh, political posters, my influence came from people's opposition to the Vietnam War. And then over the years I was able to create works in solidarity with social struggles that were tied to the civil wars that were happening. It's a way for me to digest what's going on and to be able to take an image and create something positive out of a situation that's very negative. It's just kind of a way to, to heal. It helps me heal, and I'm hoping that, that healing process will carry on to other people that see it. Vengo de, de La Habana, eh, de Cuba. He vivido en un pueblo de pescadores donde casi siempre sus habitantes recrean leyendas, historias y mitos que son muy ricos y normalmente se integran a la vida cotidiana como si fueran parte de esa realidad. Y entonces crean todo un mundo fantasioso y mágico que nos invita a soñar y a, y a también conocer la realidad de un lugar en, dentro de su realidad está también la situación extrema en que han sido sumidos por mucho tiempo. La gente ha sufrido un ciclón meteorológico, pero ha sufrido un ciclón histórico también. Un ciclón político que le ha arrasado todo lo que tenía. Y la gente lo que sueña es con irse de ahí algún día. Estoy haciendo la continuación de un proyecto pictórico que tiene que ver mucho con lo real maravilloso y el realismo mágico dentro de la, de la pintura. Y en este caso, estas naves están recreadas dentro de mi obra como unas máquinas que vuelan e invitan a, también a atravesar estos cielos, a atravesar estos mares para encontrar un mundo nuevo. La migración, que es un denominador común en mi obra, trae consigo no solamente el hecho de, de venir las personas, sino también las personas traen consigo sus recuerdos, su experiencia, su historia y la imponen en este nuevo contexto. Y estas máquinas que se arman, se arman para de alguna forma salvaguardar eh, como especie de un arca la historia que llevan de un lugar a otro. Creo que este momento está dedicado a la ciudad. Me siento dedicado a la ciudad y de esta manera quiero captar todo lo que pueda darme la ciudad e incorporarlo a mi obra. En este caso ahí tengo una pieza que se llama ahora, se llama Charlo, que he estado trabajando en ella y que eh, es una asistencia de esa gran maquinaria flotando sobre la ciudad que está tranquila y desconoce el mundo mágico que, que le ha visitado. Ya estoy trabajando en ella desde que la he sentido en la calle el afecto y eso me ha gustado mucho y eso me, me conecta mucho con ese primer pueblo donde yo viví y nací y se llama Batabano. Entonces quiero de alguna forma rendir un homenaje a esta ciudad y a su gente en esta obra que estoy trabajando.